Alright, take your Bible and turn to uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thank goodness for technology. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Fortunately, I got this sermon mostly memorized. I haven't preached it for about seven years. But it's one of those sermons that every, I believe I'll be preached by every five years or so in this day and age. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where's the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that You'll take and bless this message. I pray that You'll bless each and every one here this morning. I pray now that You'll help me as I preach it. I pray that You'll give me the words to say. I pray that You'll bless what's said today. I pray that it will help someone today with their uh, walk with You. And I pray that they'll have a desire to walk in such a way that is pleasing in Your eyes and not in man's eyes or even caring the way other men look at them, but that what they'll do is take and try to live a life that is according to how you desire them to live. It. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright, so. Anyway. Introduction to this message. Milo says, walk in the old ways, the old paths. And we live in a day and age of modern technology. Modern ways of doing things. And my mother-in-law, she, she was in a cooking class, and she went to this cooking class and learned how to cook with an instant pot. Amen? And I have an Instant Pot, and I really like my Instant Pot. Instant Pots are very good. We were just talking about that yesterday. And Instant Pots, you take this meat, man, in 30 minutes, it can have that meat real tender. It's like a pressure cooker. You can put different ingredients in it and make it good. And I was wanting to make some chicken in my Instant Pot for supper. And I asked my mother-in-law, did they give you a cookbook? For, or a cookbook guideline for that Instant Pot. She goes, yeah, but I don't know about the recipes in it. And I picked up that cookbook, and I flipped through that cookbook, flipped through that cookbook, flipped through that. I had it back. She says, you can keep this. You can keep this. And I, I went back, and I looked uh, up an old recipe for an old, uh, old um, iron... Uh, the way they cooked it in the old iron. Uh, what was Dutch oven? Dutch oven. Old style of cooking. You know what I did? I took the ingredients, I took the instructions of that, and I put my chicken in the instant pot, put that in the ingredients in the instant pots of that old bath, and it turned out pretty good. I still got to work on that instant pot. You say, What's your point, preacher? My point is this new technology stuff is good. It's useful. It does a good job when used right. But don't change the ingredients. Don't change the ingredients. The ingredients are still the same. If you want the good flavor, if you want something that tastes right, if you want something that tastes as good, you're going to have to still use the same ingredients. I, I think whatever whoever wrote that cookbook was worried about health and all these new modern day health things. 
man, that stuff sounded disgusting. I don't know what it was. <laughs> like, I ain't cooking that stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know about that. And you, you know, the old past, they had a certain way. I mean, they, they've learned down through the ages how to cook something, how to do it a certain way, and they have this thing down to an art. That they have it down to perfection. And you might be able to take that Instant Pot and do it quick, but it's never going to be quite the quality if you take your time and slow cook that thing over coals or over a fire on a grill or in a smoker the way they did it in the old ways. What I'm saying is the new ways are quick, they're productive, but they don't have the quality. They don't quite produce the quality. And if you want quality, you slow cook that thing over a smoke coal. Smoke meat, man. I, I mean, by time, but, but you, it takes time. And it takes effort to produce quality. We live in a generation of instant gratification. Oh, yeah. Instant gratification. Yeah, we, we have a lot of knowledge that we can go in, we can go boop, 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 boom. Yeah, I know how to do that. No, you really don't know how to do that. You were just told how to do it. <laughs> but, uh, but, but you have a lot of knowledge to your access. That doesn't mean you're a quality user. I, I like like uh, when it comes to automotive, you can learn a lot of things on automotive on this. But if you don't know how to decipher the information on this and take that information and apply it, you're going to get yourself in a whole lot of trouble. You're going to get yourself in a whole lot of trouble. Uh, I, I've met the YouTube mechanics. And if you don't actually have the training, the training, YouTube will get you in trouble when working on cars. And, and we're in a day and age where everything is new for us. Everybody thinks the, the new way is the better way. And what we've sacrificed is we've sacrificed quality for instant gratification. We've sacrificed quality. And the same thing has rolled over into the Christians of today. It has rolled into us where now the Christians want everything fast, but there's no quality of building. And what you find out with the Christians is, yeah, you get a lot of people into a church, but none of them get grounded. And what you have is a country full of baby Christians. And there's no grounded. There's no grounding in them. And they're, they're swayed by every wind of doctrine. And they easily fall into sin. And they easily accept sin. And, and they, they don't even understand what sin is anymore. And, and, and they can't figure out why. And so it's Laodicean church where they've built a great big congregation... And they get what they want. Laodicea means the rights of the common people. They want their rights. They want their way. And they got it. And the Lord Jesus Christ is outside knocking on the door. And He's not even in a church. And that's a church full of gratification for the flesh. It's pleasing for the flesh. And that's what we see all through America. We see this all through America. And the problem is, is the modern day Christian needs to learn a valuable lesson. And the valuable lesson is, the old way is better. The old way is better. We need to go back to the old paths. This new stuff doesn't work. And we need to step back into the old ways. I want to preach on some old paths. Some old paths. 
some paths that are still good today that works in the eyes of the Lord and has the Lord's blessing upon the Christian and upon the church, but they seem a little bit archaic to the Christian today. They don't seem to be exactly in the trend, as you could say, or popular. Number one, number one, when it comes to the old paths, we need to learn the paths of the Word of God. The paths of the Word of God. Take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. And look at verse 3. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 3. It says, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and He will teach us of His ways, and we will walk in His paths. For our Zion shall go forth the wall, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. If you're going to learn the paths of the Lord, the old ways, the old paths, the Lord's paths, the Lord's ways, you have to do it by the word of the Lord. I'm not talking about the amateur psychiatry that you get today from pulpits. The pulpits has failed the Christian today. And the reason being is because they've never opened the Word of God or they have corrupted the Word of God. They're all talking about some new version every other week that comes out that's better and they always compare it to the old one. The very old one. Not the one that they had just come out with last year but the old one. Why? Because the test of all the paths of the Word of God is from this old King James Bible. Alright? So if you're not getting your ways from the old book, then you're not in the old paths. You don't have the old paths there. But let me tell you, there was a fruit in this country that was produced by this book. You had the first great awakening. You had the second great awakening. The guys like D.L. Moody, the guys like Jack Hiles, the guys like Dr. Ruckman, they all came using this book. Using this book. It had a fruit to it. It had a fruit where the people stood on righteousness. They had good doctrine. They had the fundamentals of the faith. You know, today, with all the new paths and stuff, you got people that claim to be Bible believers even start and trying to reteach the Trinity and the deity of Christ. Like, I, 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 the Lord didn't hide the doctrine of the Trinity for years and years and all of a sudden reveal it to some young punk today that thinks he knows the Bible. I mean, come on. You, you, they're, they're, you ain't learning something new and teaching it today that none of the old great preachers of the past didn't know. Matter of fact, if you found something new, you better question and really examine that thing. You, you, you know what? All the truths of the Word of God, they were known by people of the past. We might find a different way to explain it. We might find some way to see things a little bit more in depth that's already there, but you're not finding anything new. It's not new. Them ingredients are still the same. It's still the same. You might have new tools to use. You might have new searches. And you might have some new fancy commentaries and different things. But the old paths are still the same. It's still the same doctrines. It's still the same teachings. It's still the same Word. You don't have to change it or find something new. There's a danger in searching for something new. And you know, a lot of Christians, they want something new. They want some new thing. As it says in the book of Acts, they're coming to try and find some new thing. You've got to be careful with those new things. There was one time in this country where the schools were saturated with the Word of God. They used to teach in the public schools a little book called the ABCs, the alphabet. 
And, and for every ABC, there was a verse from the Word of God that was that A stands for this, and then they had to quote a verse that started with A. B, and that's the way they learned their alphabet was by memorizing the Word of God. Where in the public schools, in the public schools in this country, you you say how long ago is that? That's a couple hundred years ago. It's a long time ago. But slowly, we've grown away from the old ways and the old paths. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18 through 20, it says, Therefore shall ye lay up these words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates. What does that mean? That means to be a fanatic about the Word of God. Where you put it on bumper stickers and slap it on your cars. Where you take and put it on your doorpost. Where you take and start the day by reading the Word of God and you end the day by reading the Word of God. You make your children memorize verses. Okay? And you say, well, well, they need to choose their own way. No, you need to teach them. When Joshua said, choose you whom you will serve, he did not ask if his children wanted to walk in His ways. It says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will. And, and you need some parents today that will step back in the old ways and tell their children, hey, in this house it's not an option. The Bible's going to be part of your life. You need some pastors that will step up in the pulpit and say, hey, hey, it's not an ap- option. The King James Bible is going to be the part of this church that will be preached from and will be believed. And if you don't like it, go to some non-denomination. Have a nice day. Okay? They want to depart from the old ways. You know what? This, this is no longer any good, even though the doctrine is saturated in these songs. Uh, th- these songs are too old passioned. We, we, we need to get the remedy chance, the repetition. It doesn't teach anything. I mean, I can take and go to some of these books. I mean, just, just open it up. It says, uh, let's see. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice and told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me near and near to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near and near, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding sign. It says, O the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with Thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. And all through these verses, you know what it's going to teach you? It's going to teach you fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and it's going to teach you good doctrine and it's going to teach you to praise Jesus Christ and not praise yourself. You know what the trend of even some of the better songs, the better songs among Christians of the new modern songs, you know what it is? It's not about you praising God. It's about God helping you. That's, that's the new trend. It's about, God help, it's about what you're going through and how God's going to help you. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that that is always a bad thing. But let me tell you something. The old way's better. The old way's better. When you get your eyes on Jesus Christ and it's all about... Hey, my problems are just short. Who cares about them? But He's eternal. Let's praise Him. Let's glorify Him. Let's magnify Him. Let's get our eyes on Him and not our problems. You know what the trend is in the new music today? Jesus Christ revolves around me. I'm talking about the conservative stuff. I'm not even talking about the Christian rock junk. I'm talking about the more conservative modern songs that comes out among the conservative movement. 
Jesus Christ revolves around me to help me be a better Christian. He revolves around me. No, ain't the way it works. Jesus Christ is the solid rock. We stand on Him. It's about Him. It's about Him. It's not about us. It's not about us. That's the new way. The old way's better. The old way's better. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ. It's about Him. We learn that from the words of God and what they teach us. The old hymns will teach you the Word of God. If you have to compromise on this book or change this book, you're, you're trying some new finagled way. The old ways are better. You need to get back to the old paths. Now, don't go after them new versions. Don't go after them new ways. Go back to the old paths. Now, the, number two, there's a path of righteousness that has been lost. Righteousness has been lost today. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 20-22, 20 through 22, it says, That thou mayest walk in the ways of good men, and keep the paths of righteousness. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect man shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the, the transgressors shall be rooted out. It says it will keep the paths of righteousness. You know, that, that's not the way anymore. That's not the new way that they have. You, you know, today the way is, well, if you feel good about it, it's okay. It, it, we're, we're not here to judge I thought my Bible said the righteous judge of all things. Amen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought, yeah, we were supposed to judge ourselves before we judge them. But we still judge. We still judge. Why? Because you have to judge between, between what's right and what's wrong. You actually don't live in a day and age where you have to judge between right and wrong. You live in a day and age where now they say that your righteousness is the wrong. You're the bad guy. You're, you're the guy that can't say anything. Because if you say anything, then you need to go to jail because you're the hater. If you say anything about righteousness. In Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 23 and 24, it says, And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in, and in controversy they shall stand in judgment and shall judge it according to my judgments and they shall keep my laws and my statutes and all my assemblies and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. You say, well, he's saying that? He's saying if you're going to make a difference between holy and profane, you're going to have to be a little bit judgmental. Because you've got to judge according to my judgments. You, you, you know, and it's not an alternative lifestyle. It's an abomination. God's not going to bless a country. Hey, I'd rather, be, I'd rather be Josiah than to be Lot. Amen? I'd rather run them out of the country then have to flee the country. Amen? Amen? Lot, Lot he, 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 he was tolerant. He, he was a tolerant guy. He, he tolerated a lot of stuff. He lost everything because of it. He had to flee because he was too tolerant. Josiah, he runs them out. One of the greatest revivals Israel had. You want to pray for revival in America? All right, go ahead and take the immigrants, but exchange them. Give them the sodomites, we'll take the immigrants. You know, a fair trade. <laughs> you know, fair trade. Amen? Why? Because it's righteousness. It's righteousness. That, that sin's an abomination. You, you, you know, you're never going to fix this country of its abominations of filth and 
the uh, filth of the sexual diseases until you eliminate pornography and make it outlawed. Period. Period. You cannot fix the moral state of this country until you outlaw pornography. There should not be any such thing as a rated R movie in America. Because of that filth. It needs to be removed and outlawed and banned. Guns are not the problem. The media is the problem. The media, the brainwashing of putting the filth into the minds of our young people. And, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you can't protect them from it today. You, you, you say, well, they can't survive and work a job unless they learn how to use technology today. I'm sorry, technology is in every job. You've got to learn how to use it. If you're going to have a job. Yeah. And in, on every piece of technology... The filth is one button away. It's one button away. Or it doesn't even have to be a button. It just jumps out in front of you. You have to hit the button to get it to go away. Get that thing out. I don't want to see that. But then you've got to go down to Walmart and buy, buy something. And there it is. I made a covenant of my eyes. Well, that's why I bump into everybody in Walmart. I mean, you know... You, you can't get rid of this stuff. Why? Because our society is shot. They're, they're gone. Why? Because we rejected the old ways. We said, we will not walk therein. They said, we will not walk in your ways. In God we trust. What God? You, you trust I, I, I don't care what the politician that hooked up with all the hookers says right. that everybody thinks is a righteous man. You ain't going to tell me this is a God-fearing country until you decide to fight the real battles and remove sin from it. You want to say this is a God-fearing country and you want to put a God-fearing man in the White House? Alright, find me a man that will outlaw pornography. And we'll say that sodomy is abomination. They don't belong in America anymore. And if they're going to be in America, they better find a closet that hides them very well. You find me that man, now I'll say we're a righteous country. Just because you compare him to somebody much worse than him doesn't mean he's righteous. Go fool somebody else with that stuff. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any man. We, we live in a day and age where we no longer even understand what's righteous. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 through 23, it says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that, might, that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against His people and He hath stretched forth His hand against them and has smitten them and the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the street. For all of this His anger is not turned away but His hand is stretched out still. You say, you want me to say, preacher, be more modern. All right, I'll be more modern. I, I, I'll read it in a different way. Let me, let me read it to you in a modern way. Woe unto America that call evil good and good evil, and that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, because they got everything backwards. They think the preachers are the bad guys and the sodomites are the good guys. Woe unto them. Woe unto them that are wise in their own lives. Get rid of that professor. He thinks he's smart. 
and all and, and anybody that believes this is just fool. Woe unto them. Tear down the colleges with nothing but brainwashing against God. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength that mingle strong drink. You didn't want to keep probation in? You let that stuff run rampant? You're worried about guns, but alcohol kills ten times the amount of guns through drunk driving every year. You get the husbands drunk, they beat their wives to death, they beat their children to death, they have no responsibility. Why? Because of the liquor, the strong drink. But you won't stand against it. War on drugs, what a joke. You make too much money on the war of drugs. You want to have a war on drugs, you go down and kill all them jokers making it. I mean, come on, really. War on drugs? I never saw... Yeah, you want to fight in that war like you fought Vietnam. That's why you're losing. You want to fight a war? Go fight it. Go fight it. You know? They, they put all... You know, you know why? Because they don't serve... It's in God we trust more. It's in, it's in this we trust. It's in this we trust. You know what you're going to see America do here real shortly? You're going to see them turn against Israel. You're going to see them turn against Israel. They're not going to back Israel up. So are you praying they'll back Israel? I'm praying they'll back Israel up, yes. I hope we do. I hope we do. But I have my doubts. I have my doubts. I see where the world's going. You know the Antichrist will probably come out of Assyria or Syria or Iran right in that area. It's very interesting what you see going on in the world today. And if your eyes aren't open, you ain't looking up, and your ears ain't tuned in for a trumpet sound, I, I, I'm sorry, you're a blind, deaf, dumb Christian. You, 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 don't, you just can't see, hear, or smell anything spiritual, man. Uh, you, you're clueless. You, you're getting close to the end. You're getting close. And the good guy is the bad guy, and the bad guy is the good guy today. They have it all backwards. Why? Because the new paths. The new paths. And it's not just out there in society. It's in the churches. You preach an average message against sin in the average American church today, they'll kick you out so fast it'll make your head spin. They can't endure the sound doctrine. We're not getting better as a as the church. We're getting worse. One of the things that I've had a desire in my ministry is when I get to the judgment seat of Christ, I want to feel like I took my people backwards and not forwards. Amen. You say, what do you mean by that? That means I, I, I want to take them back to Philadelphia instead of up to Laodicea. We're in Laodicea. I want to go backwards, back in history. I, I, I want to be a people that God wasn't on the outside of the church, but He was in there fellowshipping with them, working with them, and we were doing things His way. The old paths. The old paths. Number three. Not only should we seek the paths of righteousness, but we ought to seek the paths of judgment. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, 7 through 9, it says, He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. I've already pretty much preached this point with the last point. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 says, He that spiritual judgeth all things. When it comes to judgment, if you're going to judge a matter, you have to see the matter from God's eyes. You have to see it from biblical eyes. 
I'll tell you, when it comes to judging the matter, we have a hard time doing that that because we have been so brainwashed and tainted by the views of the world today that we can't even see things from God's eyes anymore. Because there's such a fog and a smoke screen, it's hard to see through and actually see things the way God saw. In the Bible, the sodomite was to be put to death. In the Bible, somebody that talk back to their parents was to be put to death. Whoa. We don't even want to spank them. No. In the, in the Bible, you used a rod to correct the child. And you used a rod for a fool's back. I've always said, you know, we, we have a prison problem today. We, can't, we, we have to let our prisoners go because there's just no room to hold them. So, so, so we animal, well, is he a violent criminal? Is he this criminal? I don't believe in a prison system. I don't think man... Uh, did you ever see man being locked up under biblical law? Oh. You know how he was punished? Uh, I, I, they, want to, they want to spend billions of dollars to take it, or millions, I, I think it's 30 million, to build a new jail here. I got a solution. I got a solution. A post about that high with about four feet of concrete to put that thing solid, a leather strap to put them on, and a whip. Don't, don't lock them up for five years for still. Put 40 stripes on his back. So you're going to all medieval on us. I bet it'll work. I'll bet it'll work better than the system that they have here. Why? Because it's a biblical way. It's a biblical. The Bible says, the rod for the fool's back. The rod for the fool's back. He gets caught stealing from you, he has to pay four times what he took. If he can't pay it, he has to become your slave and work it off. Don't lock him up. do not work. If he won't work, Whip them. Say, preacher, you're crazy. No, I ain't. I just read my Bible. I read my Bible. You know what, what they said, what God said about His law? It says the other nations were saying, say, no, no people have laws so righteous and great as your laws. That's what the other nations were supposed to say about Israel. Why? Because they had the law of the Lord. They did things God's way. God's way is a better way. And, you know, in God's way, you didn't have interest the way you have today. You didn't have interest. You know what interest is? It is highway robbery for the rich to rob the poor. And to make sure... You're all a bunch of slaves if you're in debt. The borrower is servant to the loaner. And let me tell you, in America, your loaner is a hard taskmaster. He owns you. That APR thing, that means you just sold your soul. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that, that, that thing is way over what biblical interest was. I, I mean, you... Uh, and when it came to the brethren, you know what it says? It says every seven years all the debts were supposed to be just set free. In other words, there's no such thing as a 30-year loan. It was seven years. And the only time it was anything farther than that is if you really loved your master, you said, you say, hey, I, it's so good being a servant to you because you're such a good employee, I want to do it the rest of my life. Because I know you're going to take care of me better than I can take care of myself. And they love their master and they give themselves to their master. Freely. I, I mean, you, you know why we are in such economic struggles today? Because we did it to ourselves. We did it to ourselves. When we ignored God's Word. When we ignored it. Bad judgment. Well, we don't have the old paths of judgment anymore. We don't see things from 
God's viewpoint anymore. When it comes to adultery and fornication, boy, do we not see it the way God sees it. Adultery and fornication, well, it's adult consent. It's adult consent. Back in, back, back in the Bible times, they were stoned for that. Yes. Unless they're forgiven. Yes. Now, I'm not saying to not forgive people. I mean, we're, we're in a day and age right now where you've got to take what you can get that's coming to the Lord and you've got to let the Lord work in their hearts and do something with them. And I don't know if you all seen the young man that walked in this morning. He got him a coffee. I tried to get him to stay. He wanted to stay. He wouldn't take tracks. He wouldn't take nothing. He just wanted coffee and donuts. That's typical. It's typical. You can't get them in Jersey. I mean, uh, I, I know a guy, my brother, he, he'd take $5. He says this worked for him. I'm going to have to try it. He'd take $5 bill and chick track. He'd go up to a guy on the street and give him money. He'd say, I'll give you five bucks for five minutes of your time. I'm going to preach the gospel to you and tell you how Jesus Christ loves you and going to help you. I'll pay you five bucks to listen to me for five minutes. He says, everyone will turn it down. That's in the South. That's in the South. That's not even around here. Five book. Man, you want to teach me for five evolution for five dollars a buck a minute? That's sixty dollars an hour. I'll put up with your nonsense. Have at it. <laughs> I'll, I'll listen to it. I ain't gotta agree it or accept it, but I'll take that money, man. I mean, that's easy money. Can't get him to listen to you. Uh, we'll work for food. Next guy I have out there said, "All right, you're gonna work for food. You want to listen? You listen to my preaching for five minutes. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you five bucks for food. But the way you're gonna earn it, you're gonna listen to my preaching for five minutes, and then give it to him. Maybe you won't have so many cardboard signs in your town after that. <laughs> you know." Think about it. Think about it. They don't, they, they don't want this book. They hate this book. They absolutely hate it. They don't want nothing to do with it. You, you start preaching this book, they'll try to sue you for mental health. Try to preach this book to you. They don't want it. They don't want it. Number four. I mean, no, yeah. Number four. Walk in the instructed path. Walk in the instructed path. Take your Bible and Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. This is an old path that's lost today. Proverbs chapter 3. Let's pick up verse 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You say, what's that? That's an instructive path. That's an old path where you have to trust the Lord in all your ways. That, that's a path where no longer you're going to try to be smarter than God. You're willing to do what you're told. You're willing to be obedient and taking, not being wise in your own eyes. You, you know how hard that is to learn to do? You know how hard it is to say, Lord, that doesn't make sense to me. I, 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 I know you're telling me to do this, but it just doesn't make practical sense. My, my way's better. Well, how about I do it this way, Lord? That's all, all the big preachers and popular preachers, they say it works. I, I'll do it this way. I'll do it with all these programs and stuff. The Lord says, that ain't what I told you to do. That ain't what I told you to do. And none of them preachers have stayed in this town. That's why they're all gone. I want you to do it the way I tell you to do it. 
My way is going to be a little bit different. Are you willing to go His way? The trust of that. Now, have you ever studied the life of Ezekiel? Hey, Ezekiel, I want you to lay down in the street, play soldier for over a year while eating dung cakes. And Lord, Osteen says to do it this way. <laughs> I don't want to do it that way. Lord, that, that doesn't make sense to obey. Obey. That's my way. Why? Because there are different people than that other preacher's talking to. And if you're going to get, I already told you, I just want you to be a hard head and be obedient and not take him sway from Because they're not going to listen to you anyway. You ever been called to a people that won't listen? All they want is donuts and coffee. But to come in and sit and listen, they're not willing to do that. I, I've had them come up, uh, Preacher, will you take and give me a ride? Yeah, I'll give you a ride. And then sit out in their car for two hours waiting for me to get done, but won't come in here. I learned, you, you have to come in and sit through it before I'll help you. If you'll sit for two hours, I'll help you. You know how many people will walk away instead of taking the help? I'll buy you a tank of gas, sure. I'll buy you a tank, but you've got to sit through the service. Now, they're willing to take the hand out, but they ain't going to sit through it. They won't sit through it. Why? Because they don't want the path of instruction. They won't want to be instructed. They don't want to be told what to do by the Word of God. They hate that book. They hate it. They hate it. You willing to go the old ways? Old way of trusting the Lord with all your heart. Leaning not on your own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. You say, what's the old way? This is the old way. Lord, not my will, but Thine be done. Not my will, but Thine be done. That way has been working for thousands of years. Don't change it. Don't change it. Last of all, walk in the path of eternal life. The Bible says in Psalm 16.11, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and Thy presence is fullness of joy. And Thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Don't you know there's a path that leads to life? The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Me. There's only two ways. It's either the wrong way or the right way. It's the path of light or the path of death. The gospel is not a discussable matter. It's by Jesus Christ alone. You know, uh, today it seems like there's a trend of everybody arguing about the gospel and what it really is. The gospel has been the same thing for thousands of years, folks. It's the belief in Jesus Christ being God manifested in the flesh. Coming, dying for your sins because you could not pay for them. Taking your sins upon Him. He died, He was buried, and He rose again. Proving He was God. And He took your place, and He took your sin, and He paid for your sin because you couldn't pay for it. That's a free gift. If you'll take it, He'll give it to you. Give you eternal life. That's the Gospel. It's simple. It's not hard. And it's free. We don't have to discuss the thing. It's made very clear. Will you receive Jesus Christ? He's the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There goes your religion. There goes your church. There goes your imagination of another Jesus Christ that wasn't God in the flesh? Yeah, I understand there's other Jesuses, but if He ain't God in the flesh, what Jesus are you trusting in? I mean, I know churches that name their church after Jesus. We're, we're the church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. 
Yeah, but your Jesus Christ ain't my Jesus Christ. Your rock ain't my rock. How do I know? You know how to tell if somebody saved? You ask them two things. Who is Jesus Christ? And do you know for sure? Those two things. If they know who Jesus Christ is and they know for sure they're going to heaven, then they're probably saved. But if they can't answer who Jesus Christ is and they say they hope so, then they're probably lost. It's two questions you ask. There's a way. It's the old way. And it works. It works. It's worked time and time again. And it'll get you there. Have you gone the way of Jesus Christ? The one way? The only way? The true way? But it's a narrow way. It's a narrow way. Won't you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior today? I feel sorry for that young man that came in and took the coffee but didn't stay. Why? Because that guy was searching for something. He was searching for something. You think he had peace? I looked in his eyes. He didn't have peace. He needed something this morning. But coffee's better. Coffee. I just want the coffee and the donuts. Everybody wants the fruit of salvation without Jesus Christ. It doesn't work that way. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Which way have you been going? Have you been going the Lord's way, the way according to the Bible? Have you trusted Him in all His ways? As a Christian, do you have to do you try to go the old paths, path of righteousness, path of judgment, path of the word of God? Or have you been doing things your own way? Going down your own paths? Christian, your way is going to get you in trouble every time. Don't do things your own way. Let the Lord have your life and start seeking to do things His way. It might be old, it might be archaic, but do not be hard-hearted like the children of Israel was and say, we will not walk therein. Don't be that person. Seek out the right way. If you're lost here this morning, you can know for sure you're going to heaven when you die. Will you please come forward? You can receive Jesus Christ today and know for sure you're going to heaven when you die before you leave this building. Say as easy as that, it's as easy as that. Won't you come receive Jesus Christ as your Savior? Let's have a song of invitation.